Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Jim Thompson, a planner at NOACA, the Northeast Ohio Area-Wide Coordinating Agency. And, um, we're going to go ahead and start the transportation for the demonstrate that you are I'm going to go ahead and meet everyone. Um, but as we go through the presentation, if you have questions, you can either send them in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask. And also, if you feel like you want to hold your questions until the end, we can do that as well. Oh. Okay. So um, just to get started, um, a little bit of background about NOACA. Uh, NOACA is the Regional Transportation Planning Agency for the Greater Cleveland Area. And uh, we are the designated metropolitan planning organization for that area. So we have five counties that we serve, Cuyahoga, Lake, Lorraine, Geauga, and Medina. And uh, what we, and our board is actually made up of 46 public officials, um, county engineers, members of ODOT, um, and what have you that make the decisions uh, for NOACA itself. And um, underneath that board, we have a handful of committees, subcommittees, and advisory councils, which inform the decisions that we make and inform the planning process. And uh, Actually, what NOACA has to do every four years is we have a regional transportation plan that has a large public outreach component. And right now we're actually going through that process. So um, our new plan, which we are working on now, is going to be um, eNEO 2050. And um, so you may see information about that on the web or you know, uh, in media, social media, what have you. If you want more information about that process and our public outreach components, um, feel free to go to our website, noaca.org. Um, and on there, there is some information about eNEO 2050. And just so you know, there's an upcoming virtual town hall meeting for that um, tomorrow or Wednesday evening, I believe, uh, starting at 5.30. So if you want more information, please go to our website. Okay, so now I'm um, on to the Transportation for Livable Communities Initiative program applicant workshop itself. Um, so let's see here. Trying to advance the slide and it's, it's frozen. Okay, there we go. It's just lagging a little bit. Okay, so the NOACA Board of Directors established the TLCI program back in 2004. And essentially um, what the purpose is, is to support transportation planning, which leads to implementation. And in this process, we are looking mostly at multimodal planning efforts. So um, mostly um, you know, non-single occupancy vehicle projects. So we look at walking, biking, transit use and access, and how a lot of these modes interact with each other. This program uh, supports the vision of NOACA's regional strategic plan, as well as our long range transportation plan, which I just noted is updated every four years. TLCI also provides federal funding assistance to local communities. And as said, it supports planning, which leads to implementation. So TLCI was authorized by our board of directors in May of 2004. Initially, there was a $1 million budget for the program um, in fiscal year 2005. And the first projects or planning studies from the program started in 2006. So we've had um, over 100 TLCI planning studies which have been completed since the start of the program. Now, NOACA has invested uh, a lot of time energy and um, money into the TLCI program. So as mentioned, the planning study program started in 2006. And since and um, our last round was uh, last year, we called our 2020 round. And we've partnered on 133 total planning studies um, up through last year. We have invested about $9.3 million in the planning studies program since its um, initiation. And that does not even capture the local funds and state funds that have gone into implementing these projects. Now, NOACA did an evaluation of the TLCI program back uh, in 2011 through 2014. And uh, really just to get some feedback on the program, um, some of the strengths and weaknesses, and to see how we could uh, strengthen it. 
So one thing that came out of that evaluation process was the TLCI implementation program. And so the implementation program really uh, provides money on an annual basis for investing in construction projects that are recommendations that come out of the TLCI planning studies. So since 2015, when the implementation program was created, we have supported 59 projects um, with a total NOAC investment of about $8 million at this point in time. This is the web page for TLCI on NOACA's website. Um, it's pretty easy to find, noaca.org backslash TLCI. And here is where you can find a lot of information about the program. Um, usually towards the top there, well actually right below the photo, we have information about the annual project solicitation process. So that's where you can currently find our two applications, the one for planning studies and the one for implementation. And then below hand, you can find other information about the solicitation. Um, so this uh, presentation will be added to this web page either probably early in the next couple of days, early this week. Um, you can also find other information about the program historically. There are web links to the planning studies that are completed. There's information about all the projects that have been awarded um, and you know, various other web pages that are tied into the program. So this is a good resource for you if you are looking for information on an application round, or if you're looking at you know, anything that goes into uh, the background of the program. Okay. So as mentioned, there was an evaluation process that NOACA did for the TLCI program, and the policy was actually adopted, the current policy was adopted in 2015 by the Board of Directors. Uh, this policy showed support for the continuance of the TLCI planning studies program. Uh, it showed that there was a lot of value to local communities for these transportation planning efforts. It created the implementation program, and the policy also lays out the uh, six TLCI program objectives, which we'll get into in a minute. The eligibility, both for uh, project types as well as project applicants. The project selection process, funding, and the responsibility that the project sponsors have for TLCI, project management. So just briefly going to go over the six TLCI, pol TLCI policy objectives. Um, and these are uh, things that the NOACA staff looks at closely when we are evaluating applications for both the TLCI planning studies and implementation programs. So the first TLCI policy objective is to develop transportation projects which provide more travel options through complete streets and context sensitive solutions um, with an impact on increasing user safety and supporting positive public health impacts. The second objective is to promote reinvestment in underutilized or vacant properties through development, through development concepts uh, which support multimodal transportation systems. The third objective is to support economic development through place-based transportation and land use recommendations, um, as well as connecting these proposals with existing assets and investments. The fourth policy objective is to ensure the benefits and burdens of growth, change, and transportation projects are distributed equitably by integrating accessibility and environmental justice into projects. Um, the fifth objective is to enhance regional cohesion by supporting collaboration between regional and community partners. And lastly, to provide people with safe and reliable transportation choices, which enhance their quality of life. So those are the six TLCI objectives, and uh, we'll go over those again as we go through the applications themselves. But really, uh, when you're applying for the program, you want to tie in how your project addresses some or all of these. Um, does not have to address all of them to be a good application. So the funding for the TLCI program is established by the Board of Directors, and we currently have an annual budget of $2 million for this program. Up to $500,000 of that can go towards planning studies, and the remainder, or at least $1.5 million, is allocated to implementation projects. Um, and then also implementation projects have a minimum project cost of $100,000, uh, but there is no funding cap on how much sponsors can request for either program but I would recommend that you don't ask for more uh, than is available in the budget. Um, and I would say for the implementation program, uh, just doing a review of the past few rounds, 
uh, the average award tends to be between two and three hundred thousand dollars for applicants. This is a little bit of a change from the most recent rounds, uh, the funding. So over the past few years, um, NOACA has allowed toll revenue credits to um, allow all TLCI projects to be eligible for 100% federal funding. Um, this round, we are kind of going back to how it used to be uh, for the program, in which we are trying to focus on projects that will support um, our commitment to racial equity and planning. And so at the bottom here, you can see in June of this year, the NOACA Board of Directors um, adopted a new statement um, to support racial equity and planning. And that statement is that NOACA is committed to being a leader in transforming our region into one where equity is achieved by creating access to opportunity through transportation and environmental planning. So with that being said, um, we are really focusing on allowing up to 100% funding for projects which are in either NOACA environmental justice areas, urban core communities, and disadvantaged communities. And real quick here, um, this information is spelled out by NOACA's Regional Transportation Investment Policy, which is located on our Transportation Improvement Program webpage. And I'm just going to pull that up here so you can see what it looks like if you'd like more information on it. This is our Regional Transportation Investment Policy. And I believe it's on page eight. Let me see here. Yeah. So starting on page eight, um, you can see NOACA's definition and list of current urban core communities. This is uh, based on census data. And the urban core communities are uh, mostly those uh, initial communities uh, that developed in the region. This is an attempt to mitigate supporting sprawl in the region. So these are the current urban core communities listed here. And then within that list um, is the list of disadvantaged communities. And so disadvantaged communities, uh, they have uh, a higher minority population or low income population or higher elderly population or a higher population of individuals with disabilities or those with low English proficiency. So this is the current list of dis designated disadvantaged communities um, in the Noaka region. This is based on census data, which as you know, this year um, the census is underway. So we will have new data in a, probably, um, I think about two years or so, so we can update this list. And then one other thing here, um, due to our commitment to social equity, we also are looking at providing this opportunity to environmental justice areas. Um, and an, an environmental justice area is an area where um, there's two bullets there at the bottom. Either a percentage of minority population is at or above the regional average or the national average, whichever is lower, or a percentage of low income population is at or above either the regional average or the national average, um, whichever is lower. So essentially we want to focus um, more funds to those areas which have higher minority or low income populations. And that is not listed uh, as the other two are in this document, but you can go to the NOACA GIS portal, which I pulled up here. You can go to the fourth tab from the left, which is planning. And then the second thing to pop up is environmental justice areas. So these areas, uh, they're transportation analysis zones or TAS areas. And so you can see here where the environmental, the current environmental justice areas are located. So if your project is in these areas, you can request to have um, a lower local match than 20%. So, okay, that's that. If you have questions about your, um, the area where your project is located and you aren't sure if it meets any of those criteria, you can always get in touch with me and we can discuss that. Okay, so eligibility. Um, all local governments, all local government agencies are eligible to apply for TLCI planning, study, or implementation funds. Um, they have to have the legal authority to sponsor a federal aid capital improvement project under the Ohio Revised Code Chapter 5501.03D. Nonprofits such as community development corporations and advocacy organizations um, must partner with eligible government entities which have jurisdiction over the project. 
and then implementation projects must be based on recommendations that come out of either a TLCI planning study or a TLCI like planning study. And um, that's currently the case because we know that sometimes communities um, may apply for TLCI planning studies and may not receive an award, but they go ahead and decide to fund their own planning study uh, to study the transportation issue at hand. And so we just like to see that if you don't have a TLCI study specifically, that your TLCI like study has a transportation focus. It has to have sufficient public involvement, which should be akin to a TLCI study. So historically that's three public meetings which are focused on the project, the transportation issue. Obviously uh, more recently with the COVID-19 pandemic, um, you know, public meeting criteria has changed temporarily for a lot of us. Um, so, but you need to at least demonstrate that you had something um, that is kind of akin to those three public meetings. Maybe they meet your new criteria. Um, and then lastly, your planning study needs to have countermeasures that address a transportation problem. So you need to have actual countermeasures and recommendations that came out of the planning process that is transportation focused. And if you have a planning study that's TLCI-like, but you're not sure if it meets those criteria, you can get in touch with me in the future and um, you know, we can discuss that. Okay, so TLCI project sponsor responsibilities. Um, TLCI is a federal reimbursable program. So it is managed by NOACA, but uh, these are federal funds. So the projects must meet all um, federal criteria for transportation dollars. And um, that is actually, um, ODOT has oversight over that and we partner with them on this. The TLCI planning study awardees will work with NOACA and review the TLCI consultant list to select potential primary prime consultants. So every year, NOACA goes, every other year, NOACA goes through the process of actually um, having a request for proposals and selecting a list of TLCI um, consultants that are already ready to uh, be available to do the planning study projects. And that is updated every two years. Uh, we actually just updated that list this past spring. So um, the new list is on the TLCI website of consultants. Uh, for the most part, it's, it's, it's very similar to how it's been in the past with a lot of the same consultants on the list. Um, this year, um, as with our 2020 program for planning studies, NOACA will actually hold the contract with the TLCI prime consultants. In the past, um, I guess over the past couple of years for planning studies, the contracts have been held by the local uh, project sponsor or the awardee. Um, with those consultants, but moving forward, NOACA will hold that contract um, with them. Uh, that kind of helps to mitigate some of the administrative issues that we've had over the years um, with making sure that invoices and everything are paid promptly. Um, it just kind of uh, makes it a simpler process. And then lastly here, it says that TLCI projects are typically expected to be implemented within 24 months of award. So our intention of this program is for it to be faster than uh, some of our um, other standard funding programs, um, you know, such as our STBG funds, TAP, CMAC. Um, so TLCI for construction implementation, we're looking to have those, the funds are available sooner for implementation projects and for planning studies. And um, the goal is to have those done more in the, the short near term um, so that we can see those changes. Now, sometimes, especially during the pandemic, there are reasons um, that projects may get held up. We understand that but our intention is to have this um, move pretty quickly, relatively speaking. So when you're applying, I guess, especially for an implementation project, think about the timing of it. Think about when you might have your local budget available to match things. Um, typically, um, I'll go through the schedule in a little bit, but typically we award our projects in March um, of every year. And then we have a few uh, months there where we are getting award letters out and contracts and so, you know, you really want to have your, your project um, from now, um, I would say you want to have it ready to go within about 30 months or so or less. Okay, so now I'm going to go through the applications. Um, I know that I, I've muted everyone here. If you have any specific questions, um, you know, it's okay to go ahead and ask them, but you can also wait until the end um, and I can always go back in the presentation to go over some slides uh, where you have some questions. Okay, so this is the TLCI planning study application. The application for the planning study and the implementation uh, program looks similar, uh, but they have different 
obviously titles and uh, there's different font colors to try to differentiate between the two. So the planning study application is stated as such at the top and it has a green title and it has mostly black font. Um, at the top, you'll see the due date for the program this round for both applications is October 16th, 2020. That is a Friday and uh, that's by 12 p.m. If you have issues uh, that day, feel free to email me or let me know. Sometimes there's a glitch with the system that we use for applications. The system is called Formstack. Um, we really haven't had many issues in the past couple of years, but I know the first few rounds where we did have this, um, you know, every once in a while there would be an issue. So if you have an issue, don't panic. Um, our goal is to get all eligible applications in. So just to make sure you let me know if there's something wrong. Um, especially now that a lot of us are working from home, we may have different, you know, internet access, what have you. So we understand. So um, first and foremost, um, really at the top here are the a shortened version of the TLC, TLCI objectives. Um, there is a link to the web page at the top there and NOACA's regional strategic plan. And then it also gives you a link to uh, back to our web page if you are looking to apply for the implementation program instead. And then there's a link there that shows you where previous planning studies are. So if you've never heard of TLCI before, or if you've never applied um, for a TLCI project, you can go ahead and look through um, our previously awarded planning studies and kind of see uh, what types of, of planning studies they are, um, you know, and, and what we look at in these planning studies. So feel free to do so if you need to. Next, um, it really just goes through the update the funding information and where you can get that information. There's actually a hyperlink there to the Regional Transportation Investment Policy with those definitions of um, urban core communities, disadvantaged communities, and environmental justice communities. So it's all right there for you to see. Um, and then my contact information is down there at the bottom. Um, we are not currently working in the office, uh, NOACA staff. So you can email me. I will get that with regular hours. If you call me, leave me a voice message. Um, I cannot answer the phone <laughs> if you call my office phone, but I can get the message pretty quickly and then return your call. So emails faster, but you can always call if you have questions and I'll call you back. All right, so next in the application is uh, your standard contact information. Uh, make sure that you put the, the appropriate contact person. Usually the person applying is the, the main contact, just in case we have questions about your application um, or if there are materials missing, what have you. Uh, that way I can get in touch with you pretty quickly. Um, you know, if you have someone who's in the office two days a week and someone else who's there full time and you're both working on the project, you know, it might be better for the full time person, you know, whatever works. Below the contact information is the study information. So um, really that's where you are letting us know how you want to move forward with this. And what that means is most of our planning studies are led by consultants, um, as mentioned by the uh, pre-qualified consultant list. But we do also do a handful of NOACA staff-led TLCI planning studies. Um, we, you know, we've kind of uh, slowed down the amount that we do because we had a backlog uh, at the staff level. But you can select there if you prefer to be led by a consultant, if you prefer to be led by NOACA staff, or if either will work. Um, so that kind of lets us know. And if, you know, if we have the ability at the NOACA staff level to do the project, and um, you know, if the project aligns with, with some of the things that we typically do, you know, we might be able to do that with you directly. So you do have an option there. Just let us know what you prefer. Um, next is the study name. Um, please try to be concise with the name. Uh, try not to make it too long. <laughs> um, you know, to, but make sure that it makes sense and it aligns with what the actual study is. So it's descriptive. Um, so we have an idea. After that, you're going to put in the total project cost or what you think the cost would be for the planning study. You're going to put in the amount that you're requesting from NOACA, and then you're going to put in the local funding amount. And so those should add up. Um, any funding that is not, would not be NOACA funding for this, put under local, even if you are you know, in the process of figuring out how you would pay a, a local share um, and you don't know where the funds are specific, specifically coming from, let us know. Um, and the reason is um, afterwards you need to describe the local funding sources. We just need to make sure that there are no um, funding sources that would conflict with, um, with this as a local match. And essentially that's mostly USDOT funds. Um, now mind you, if you have other USDOT funds in a project and want to combine 
and um, that's fine. It just can't be used as the local match. Um, okay, so then the next question uh, is a checkbox asking if you would consider partial funding. I would say, uh, you know, maybe one or two of our awards per year, we do have a conversation with the project sponsor during the evaluation process, and uh, we may recommend partial funding. Um, that happens for a handful of reasons. It really depends on the project. It may be an eligibility issue. If there are pieces that are not eligible or we don't think are necessarily eligible, we might pull those out of the cost. Um, it might be a priority issue. We may wanna focus more of the project scope on one part and not other parts. Um, it might be a budget issue. It might be the amount of funding that's available. So let us know if you can still implement the project with some partial funding. Uh, when we do that, uh, we, you still you know, would probably get at least 50%, if not more, of the funding for a planning study. Um, but just go ahead and indicate that there so we know. Um, and then next, your project location. So uh, let us know where it is. Please be concise and uh, descriptive. So we want to know, you know, what city it's in or what neighborhood. Um, you know, sometimes actually the, in the box below that, you can go into more detail and let us know, you know, what the termini are, if it's along a corridor or, um, you know, if it's in a very specific neighborhood or something. So this just gives us an idea on where the project is located. And then next below that, uh, the detailed project description, really just let us know what the problem is. I mean, this is for the, the planning studies program. So obviously there's a transportation issue that needs to be studied. So what is it? You know, is there a safety issue? Um, is there an issue with, uh, you know, people not being able to cross a corridor? Um, you know, is there a lack of bicycle infrastructure? Um, is there a lack of transit infrastructure? What have you? So let us know what the problem is. This is kind of um, where we, we really learn, you know, what your project could be. And then down below that, just uh, check all that apply in terms of the components that, are, that could be included in your study. Um, obviously, if the project is awarded as we move forward, um, NOACA staff will work with you on defining the scope specifically, but let us know what you think at this point in time, you know, does it involve transit? Does it involve, um, you know, an area that needs to be redeveloped? Um, you know, what type of multimodal? Um, components are included. All right. And then there's a, a text box here for you to describe some of that information. Okay, so next we're going to the part of the application where uh, it, it ties back into NOACA's regional strategic plan goals and also the TLCI objectives. So this is the lion's share of the, the points out of 100 that um, are available. And so there are um, the first question is actually two combined because they're very similar. Essentially, you know, you want to let us know how your, how your proposed study is going to meet um, the goals for the, the transportation issues that you're having and how that, you know, works with multimodal travel options, complete streets, all those things. So, you know, this first one here, just let us know really what's the transportation issue and how does that relate back to NOACA's regional goals and PLCI objectives. Um, the next one, how does the proposed study meet, uh, how does it look at promoting reinvestment and underutilized abandoned properties, um, as well as how does it meet the regional strategic goal uh, to enhance the quality of life in Northeast Ohio. Now, some of these may not specifically relate back to your project, and that's okay. Um, you know, if it's, if your project has nothing to do with one of these things, you can just put NA or does not apply, and that, that's fine. Um, a project does not need to relate to everything. Um, to every one of our goals and objectives to be a good, strong project. Okay, so um, question number three here, we're looking at economic development um, and also preserving existing infrastructure. So let us know there. Um, number four, ensuring that the benefits and burdens of growth, change and transportation projects are distributed equitably, um, as well as looking at preserving existing infrastructure. And then number five down here, um, how does your, how does your um, study look at enhancing regional cohesion by supporting collaboration between regional and community partners? Um, you know, this is one where if you have a very small project in a large community, um, it may not tie in. So, you know, let us know if, if your project does relate to these, that's fine. And if not, that's also fine. But just try to give us some context on how your project does relate to these things. Okay, 
So then the last question here is really looking at um, project administration and organization. So just give us a, a, a description on how you would manage the study. And remember this round, um, NOACA is going to be holding the contracts with a consultant, but we're still going to be a, a, a close partner with you. So we just want to know, you know, how you anticipate this moving forward. You don't have to give us a detailed description, but just, you know, an idea of, of how you're going to do that. Um, if you have previous experience, maybe you can list, you know, some of those studies and how they went, what you learned from the processes, what have you. Um, so just kind of give us an idea on that. All right. So now um, we are at the, uh, the end of the application, and this is where you will go ahead and put your attachments in, as well as sign the application. So I'm going to go through these very quickly. Um, the implementation application is very similar, mind you, so I'll go through that faster because a lot of those things are the same as this. Um, so first of all, there are spots for you to upload up to five attachments here. Those that have a red asterisk, so attachments one, two, and three are required. So first we want a map of your study area. You can just take a Google map um, image. If you have a detailed map, um, that's fine. Just so we know exactly where your study area is. Um, that's for our records as well. Um, item number two, we want to have your authorizing uh, resolution or ordinance um, you know, from, from the board or city council that oversees your entity. Um, essentially, we want to make sure that they support this project and that they are going to commit to supporting the funding the local match um, as required. So um, those are required. We do realize that if you're a city, um, you know, you may need to, or whatever entity, you are, you may need to have uh, three readings and based on your meeting schedule, especially during the pandemic, um, you may not have this available by the time the application is due on October 16th. So if you don't have it, just upload a um, draft of it for me and then email me and let me know when um, it's anticipated that this resolution will be done. So you can always send that to me in the future, but it's something that we do require um, so as we go through the evaluation process at the NOAC staff level, you know, we, we pay attention to these things and it's something that we need. Um, so just let me know. Attachment number three, a letter of support from the head of the organization or community. So this is where um, if you're a city, you would have the mayor or city manager, or whoever has the authority essentially to, um, to manage or lead a study like this. Uh, we want to make sure that they are also um, supportive of this project. So we don't want to have a situation where city council wants a project and the mayor doesn't or vice versa. We want to make sure that the whole community um, or entity, you know, transit agency, what have you, um, is in support of this project um, before we go through the evaluation process. Then attachment four, a uh, letter of support from impacted political jurisdictions that are in the study area. So if you are studying something along the line of two communities and you are the you are taking the lead here as the applicant, but the other community may be impacted because it's nearby. Um, we would like to see that there's support from adjacent communities. You can go ahead and um, you know, make your decision on if this is necessary based on the scope of your project, but um, you know, feel free to, um, to go ahead and do that. Let's see here. And then attachment five is additional letters of support. So these are from non-government organizations, but they're typically impacted communities or communities that would be impacted by your project. So, okay. And then as mentioned, attachments four and five are not required, um, but one through three are. And then at the bottom of the application, it says, are you submitting more than one TLCI application? Um, you know, if you are um, underneath that, we would like you to prioritize the uh, order in which you would like those to be awarded if they are awarded by NOACA. Um, if you're submitting two applications and you know, NOACA staff recommends one, but you actually prefer the other, that could be an issue. So we just wanna make sure we know if you have more than one application, um, which you prefer. Now this is only for the, um, like if you had two applications under planning studies or implementation. If you had one of each, you don't need to do this um, because we evaluate planning studies against planning studies and, implementation against implementation. So you don't need to list something here if you have one application for each program. All right, and then lastly, the digital signature here of the uh, person who's preparing the application and then submit form. 
I will note, um, back to the attachments, you can choose a file and upload it, but you can really only do that um, once you submit the application. So don't upload the files until you're ready to submit the application itself because it won't save them here for you. Um, and also with your files, uh, you know, we prefer PDFs because they're more final documents if possible. I end up converting most of them to PDFs anyway, so it saves us some time if you can do that for us ahead of time. And also things like letters of support, if you have more than one, combine them into one document. Okay, so that's a planning study application. Um, I'm going to go, let's see here, into the implementation. Well, actually this is the planning study selection process. So what will happen is um, NOACA staff, we have a team uh, that evaluates the applications of staff members. Um, and so we will go ahead and score them. And then we will talk about the projects too. And then we will make our recommendations to uh, the planning and programming committee uh, for their January of 2021 meeting. And they are the ones who actually make the, the decision. I'll go through the calendar in a moment after I go through the implementation application. Okay, um, so for implementation projects, the intention here is to provide support um, for low cost, relatively speaking, infrastructure projects, which are implemented through programmatic approach. Um, you know, with this, we're really looking for, um, you know, we cannot necessarily through this program uh, fund a full, you know, uh, you know, big project, um, but we can fund things like, um, you know, bicycle infrastructure that may not be there, um, you know, crosswalk infrastructure, pedestrian infrastructure. Um, a lot of the projects have high visibility crosswalks or pedestrian signals, um, curb bump outs, uh, mid block crossings. We also have um, transit waiting environments um, that are pretty common, wayfinding and signage, um, traffic calming, such as road diets. So these are kind of the standard types of projects that uh, come through the program and are applied for. Okay, so now going through the implementation application. I'm not going to go over the items that we've already gone over for the planning study application that are the same here. So I'm gonna kind of go faster. Um, but one of the differences is this, the implementation application has blue font. It's, you know, blue title and then blue font throughout for the most part. Um, you know, it still has references back to the same items that are in the planning studies. It does, uh, reaffirm that the total project cost cannot must be at least one hundred thousand dollars here. Um, and and um, if you want to go to the planning study, you can go back to noaca.org backslash TLCI. Um, same thing, contact information um, below that is project eligibility. Here is how we you um, when you're going through can determine whether or not your project if you have a TLCI planning study or sorry a TLCI like planning study if it actually meets the criteria of that. Um, so under eligibility here, number one, is your project recommended a completed TLCI plan? Yes. If so, great. You can just move forward. If not, um, you want to answer the other questions. So um, number two then says, does the plan include a public involvement engagement component, um, which is documented? Um, yes. Great. Um, next, does the plan include a multimodal transportation focus? So you're not looking just at how you get single occupancy vehicle um, vehicles through an area. You're not really looking specifically at, you know, like just, you know, congestion. Um, you're really looking at these multimodal aspects um, that improve livability. So that's something that you really wanna focus on for this program. And then uh, question number four, does the plans proposed projects and recommendations designate specific countermeasures at a specific location? So there must be recommendations that are very specific and they must be transportation countermeasures that came out of the process. So if you say yes to all those questions, then you have a TLCI like plan. If you're not sure, uh, feel free to email me or call me and we can discuss the plan, um, you know, and, and, and we, can, we can make a determination. Um, next, the plan implementation status. So since you have a planning study already by the time you're applying for the implementation funds, um, we want to know um, if you've made progress on that plan. So what have you achieved or accomplished, you know, so far? And then next, you know, if you can put a percentage, um, you know, to that, please do so. Um, you know, what percentage of your plan is currently implemented? Um, you know, I would say most, <laughs> if a plan is 100% implemented, uh, 
you know, that's, that's really good. I, I doubt that, that happens often, but you know, you could have a good plan that the community is behind and you've had a lot of momentum. And so just please, you know, let us know. Um, and then the next one, what is your plan to implement recommendations um, that would not be covered by these requested funds? So let us know, you know, what other pieces of the plan are you working on or looking to work on in the near future to get implemented? Next is the project program in your existing um, capital improvement plan. If so, let us know what the funding components are and what the timeline is. So this shows us that your community is serious about implementing the recommendations that came out of the planning process, um, a part of the TLCI implementation program. So then next, um, we're looking at your project name, your, um, you know, if you want to go ahead and put down also what the study name is, Sometimes these names are the same, sometimes they're different. Um, if you have a very specific location, you can just put the intersection or the street or what have you and you know what you're doing, like you know, main street sidewalks or something like that would be fine. Um, below that, um, just like the other application, we're really looking at the project cost, um, what's committed, what's requested, um, funding sources, and the last item at the bottom, who is, who is anticipated to administer the construction of the project? Um, so typically that's the local community. It could be an ODOT -let project if that's something that you are comfortable with. Sometimes um, some entities will actually have the county that they're in, um, you know, go ahead and administer the project. So really think about that. Um, this, you're not tied to, to this process if you select ODOT or yourself. Um, it just gives us an idea of that you're thinking about it. Next, um, what state fiscal year do you anticipate the project to begin? So um, NOACA and ODOT operate on the state fiscal year, which is six months ahead of the calendar year. So it demonstrates there that, you know, if you want your project to occur in, let's say it's October of 2022, um, that's technically state fiscal year 2023. So just, you know, let us know the timeline and, and try, to be, try to be realistic with this. And, if you have gone through ODOT's project development process before, which is the requirement for um, you know, federal aid projects, uh, you do know that it does take more time than just a local administrative project uh, to go through um, and to get uh, federal authorization and everything. So you know, there are a handful of uh, different plan sets that need to go to ODOT and ODOT comments on them and then they come back. And so um, you know, stage one, two, and three, and then uh, you know your final PSNE. So, so really, um, try to remember that when you're trying to put the time in here. And um, if you have not done this before, I would probably add in an extra six to nine months um, for that process. And if you have questions about that, you can let me know. Next, um, project components. Just check off all the components that you think your project um, will include. Um, you know, this just lets us know um, some of the things that that this project has within it. Um, and there's a, a nearly exhaustive list of things there. If it's not there, like, you know, I think I don't see scooters. That's a new thing. So, you know, if you have scooter infrastructure or something like that, you know, that would be another that you would add. And then um, below that, finally, we get to the detailed project description. So try to be concise, but let us know what the project is and um, what you plan on doing. Um, below that, sometimes with implementation projects, uh, it makes sense administratively to combine um, this project into a larger project or a similar size project that's already underway or will be underway in that time period. Um, like if there's a road resurfacing um, on, you know, whatever road this is, that's a state project, an ODOT project, you know, um, feel free to, to consider combining that um, because it might just make sense administratively and time-wise. Um, so if that's the case, you know, go ahead and look through that. If you're not sure if there's anything planned um, for that area, you can get in touch with me and we can do some research and see if there's anything planned, you know, at this, the state level or, if, you know, NOACA has funds in an existing project um, over the next couple of years that's in the same area um, along the same facility. Okay, so this is the same as um, this, this one question here is, essentially a shortened version of how your project aligns with the NOACA TLCI objectives, as well as the NOACA Regional Strategic Plan goals. So here you'll do a checkbox and then you'll just briefly, you know, write in the, the box how your project um, aligns with these. 
once again, you don't need to check all of them. Um, you know, a strong project may only check two of these boxes, but it's a strong project. So, um, you know, feel free to go ahead and, and check all that apply. Please be realistic with that. We appreciate that. And then at the bottom, um, the last 10 points are for your project maintenance plan. So we wanna make sure that you're thinking about maintenance of this facility, whether it's existing or new. Um, you know, that's something that's very important to us. As you know, NOACA is currently, um, is currently passed um, you know, a maintenance um, policy for projects that we fund. Um, and that particularly is for these types of projects, which are not standard and may not have a standard you know, federal useful life. So just think about how you're going to maintain this project through um, what would be considered its life, its useful life. Okay, um, very similar to the other application here, the attachments, um, we have the map, we have the city council or board resolution, um, we have the letter of support from the head of the community or organization, those three are required, as well as attachment four. Um, we do require a detailed line item construction cost estimate stamped by a licensed engineer. This is extremely important. Um, we want to know that you have a very firm engineer cost estimate um, for your project. Um, you know, we've had projects that have come in that have been, usually if it's not an engineer estimate, a lot of times um, because this has to go through the federal aid process, the the request may be low. So um, we would like to make sure that you have you know, thought about this request amount or the total project cost amount and that it is fairly accurate to what the project will be for the year that you anticipate it um, you know, being constructed. So that is a requirement um, that we have. And you know, if you have questions about that, let us know. We do evaluate the cost estimate very closely when we are evaluating these implementation projects. Um, you know, it also lets us know if you are requesting a Cadillac and, you know, NOACA may prefer to fund the Chevy version. Um, you know, that's, that's one thing that also uh, is kind of tipped off to us um, by looking at these cost estimates. Um, and then the next um, item, uh, project design plan. So if you do, if you have done um, engineering for the project and you have design plans, you know, whatever phase they're in, um, even if they're preliminary, you can provide those to us so we have more information about the project. And then attachment six is letter of support from impacted political jurisdictions, just like the other application. Um, seven, letters of support from non-government organizations. And then, um, you know, the last question here, are you submitting more than one program application, yes or no? Um, you know, just let us know if you are, and if so, please go ahead and rank them in order of your priority. So we aren't recommending uh, the one that you, you don't want the most. And then once again, uh, the person who is submitting the application can sign it and then you submit the form. Once again, make sure that you are uploading your attachments right when you are submitting the application. Um, you cannot, the program form stack will not hold the documents, um, you know, once you go away from the web page. So you need to have them uploaded and then submit it. I recommend that you just save everything in one folder on your computer, and then you can go in here, and um, you know you, they're all ready to go. You choose the file, they're all there in one place, and you can upload them when you hit submit. Okay, so a little bit about the process here. Um, NOACA staff are going to evaluate the implementation applications. Um, they are out of 100 points, just like the planning studies, and that, that is mostly related to the TLCI goals and objectives, as well as the project maintenance plan. And then um, we will make our recommendations to our planning and programming committee um, in January. And actually, I'm gonna go over the schedule at a moment here. Um, as mentioned, the projects must follow ODOT's project development process. Um, and that is at that web link. Um, the construction is either administered by ODOT or local let. Um, so just think about that. Um, this kind of goes through the, the federal requirements. If you're going to do it local let, you actually have to be um, approved through ODOT to be um, a local um, project administrator. And so you have to go through a process to get some learning modules, um, you know, and you have to be a full-time employee, which, which is dedicated to the project itself. So there is a process here. If you don't have the capacity to do this, if you don't understand this and 
you know, you're, you're not sure, um, you can just say that the project will be o.let. Um, that can be the, the way that you intend to go. Okay, so here's the schedule. And I apologize if the bottom item is, um, you can't see it, but that is the last item, which is good. Um, <laughs> so first of all, the applications were made available um, by NOACA on August 17th. Um, both applications are available. And then today, September 14th, is our virtual workshop via Zoom. I appreciate you doing this virtually with me. Um, I haven't had many external Zoom meetings, so you know, hopefully you can understand me and everything's going well on your end. Next um, is the application deadline for both applications. Um, they are due. You have to submit them via Formstack, um, the application website. And that is going to be at noon on October 16th, which is a Friday. If you have questions or issues, feel free to send me an email. Um, I didn't really mention this part yet, but um, you can anticipate that we are going to be doing uh, virtual presentations. So you as the applicants, if you have an eligible application, I'm going to contact you uh, a week or so after you apply, and I'm going to schedule um, a 30 minute window for you to present on your project to NOACA staff. You don't have to have a presentation um, like a PowerPoint or whatever, but we really just want to you know, talk about your application, the location of it, what the problem is. So we have a better understanding of the project um, before we start our evaluation process. Um, so I will go ahead and schedule that with you. I'll contact you with the, the contact email um, or phone number shortly thereafter. We'll have a handful of different time slots available, so we'll make sure that we're flexible for the applicants. Um, then, um, you know, we will go ahead and present applications to our advisory councils at their November meeting. Um, we'll present them to the Transportation Subcommittee on December 18th. And um, in January, the staff evaluation process will be complete and we will, um, we will present our staff recommendations to the Planning and Programming Committee. Um, and then they will go ahead and make recommendations and go to the Executive Committee that then goes to the Board of Directors. That's the thing at the bottom, um, anticipated for March 2021. I don't think the calendar is completely set yet, but it will be, it's usually the, the first or second Friday in March, usually the second. Um, okay, so that's it. Um, we're gonna open this up to questions. There's my contact information in the NOACA webpage. So you should be able to unmute yourself um, if you have questions. Uh, hi, Jim, this is Joyce Braverman. I do have one question. No um, since NOACA staff will be paying the invoices for the studies, you're asking the local staff how this, how they'll um, manage this. Is it okay for local staff to be the main contact and manage the contract? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure how we are going to do for the planning studies, how or if we are going to need an LPA agreement yet. Um, and I'm only saying that because we are considering our, the different ways that we can do this um, because we may just be able to do it through NOACA's work plan. And so we may not need the LPA agreement. We may not need an actual agreement with you. We just may have the award letter, but we haven't figured out those details yet. So, um, but that being said, I think that could be fine. But I'm not Thank sure. Thank you. The process. Yep. Okay, any other questions? Hi, Jim, uh, this is Andrea from Lake Tran. Um, Hi, kind of in that same vein, um, does that mean that NOACA handles the procurement of the consultant? Yeah, so that's the, the, the difference. I know, Andrea, you, you currently have a planning study that's from, I think, our 2019 round, and I think that's probably our last round where we're going to have it, the the planning studies structured the way that they currently are. Um, so without, with the exception of the local match um, or local share, um, NOACA should then directly be uh, working with ODOT to pay the consultants. And so this kind of um, removes some of the burden, the administrative burden of the locals, um, as well as partially some of NOACA staff in the process. So yeah, we should, with the exception of the local share, local match, um, you know, NOACA and ODOT should be paying the consultant directly, and then the locals won't have to fund that money for planning studies. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Joyce again. Can I follow up on that? 
Yeah. Will NOACA staff be sending out an RFP or will city staff be sending out the RFP? That's a good question. Um, so you, once we have the projects awarded and we're essentially selecting a consultant that's going to be used for the planning studies, uh, we will, NOACA staff will work with the cities, but I believe the NOACA staff will be the main communication uh, individual with the consultants. But we will work with the, the local project sponsors on developing the scope that goes into that um, RFP. So, so Jim, this is Jim Zemnick. Hey, Jim. How you doing? So, um, we're going to be applying for some implementation money uh, that's coming off of the Grafton's Envision TLCI planning. Um, do, are we then? So, obviously, they've gone through plenty of public meetings as part of the implementation, which was one of the priorities out of the plan, was to connect it to our metro parks. Mm -hmm. Do we then still need to come back and do public meetings for a separate implementation or are you guys going to say, no, you've already done the public meetings as part of the planning? Right. So currently the, for the planning studies that have been done over the past couple of rounds, they should have met for the most part, um, the uh, NEPA requirements for public meetings uh, for the most part. So that was our intention with having the three public meetings um, and then you know, making sure it's documented uh, in the plan itself. So in theory, you may not have to have more public meetings, but it really just depends on your project and if there's additional uh, planning requirements that goes into that when they do the environmental review process. So you should not have to do more meetings, but you may have to, but chances are you will not. Now for older TLCI planning studies, uh, those that were done you know, probably before 2017, they may be less likely uh, to have met those uh, planning study requirements, just so you know, so everyone knows. Um, it just depends. As long as everything is documented, though, and you have three public meetings, it most likely will meet the requirements. Okay, are there any other questions? Um, hi, hi, Jim. Jim. This is Callie Mersman. Hey, Callie. Go ahead, Em. Hey, Eva. No, that's, oh, hi, Jim. No, I'm just going to call attention to the questions in the chat box. Oh, yeah, you know what? Um, thank you for doing that. I actually. I'm having issues finding it. So give me one moment here. I thought since nothing was popping up on my screen that there were no questions. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, okay. It was just hidden from me. Okay, great. Sorry about uh, not addressing these questions before. Um, so the question from Cali was, does a larger global match proposal score more competitively? If so, how would the collection amount factor into the score for the urban core distance EJ community as eligible to collect a lower global match requirement? Um, and then she asked, are particularly planning preliminary engineering activities eligible for TLCI awards? So to answer the first question, um, I guess I'll give a little bit of background. We used to have, I think this was probably three years ago and, and beforehand, we used to have this process of TLCI um, where our global match could, could um, demonstrate more points in the scoring, the evaluation process. We've gotten now, rid of that. Jim, so, this is Kelly. You're kind of breaking up a little bit. Um, okay. So I don't know if you want to just freeze where you are. <laughs> so, but you were kind of breaking up, so I'm sure um, maybe some people didn't hear the question. Can you hear me now, Kelly? Very well, yes. Okay, I will, I will go again. Um, so this is asking if a larger local match will help propose score better, essentially. And the answer is no. We used to have a piece of that in spring uh, a couple of years back, but that is, we, we do not want more of funds um, to elevate uh, the score of projects. So that's kind of part of the language change we made. Um, so then I think that nullifies the second part of her question about, you know, committing a little match for EJ um, and disadvantaged areas. And then lastly, are feasibility planning and preliminary engineering activities eligible for TLCI awards? Um, I, I would say no. Um, we typically uh, kind of cut off the process before you get into preliminary engineering. I know for other funding programs like CMAC, we do allow that. Um, but for TLCI, uh, no, we really um, are currently looking at the planning process itself. Um, feasibility planning, that 
may be up for interpretation depending on you know what specifically you're looking for but preliminary engineering activities are not eligible at this point in time okay no problem any other questions okay everyone. i think that's it um we anticipate to have this presentation up on the website uh, page soon. So you should have it available. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to call me. Uh, you know, my information is um, on the screen. Um, and um, best of luck to you. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this.